Okay, good morning. You know the drill. But it is Lady in the Legend Day. However, I'm going to tell this to the chat room when we get live. But I just want to say to, to get started, is happy Father's Day to everybody. We knew the chat room would be light today and it looks like it's going to be. But I'm still just starting a little early so we can make sure that we get sound flowing before 9 o'clock. Now, Father's Day is important, everybody, and I hope that all of you fathers are going to have a wonderful day today. It's a beautiful day, and we have uh, Lenny in the room, which is one of the best fathers I've ever known. Of course, second to my own father, who passed away eight years ago, but Lenny has raised three great children, and uh, we just want to say happy day. Happy Father's Day to the legend and, of course, to all of you people in the chat room and any of you listening on demand. The sound is good. Any of you listening on demand, just happy Father's Day. Enjoy it. Uh, So, as I mentioned before, Lenny is not with me today. He's here in the room and he's perfectly fine, but he woke up at midnight last night and he came downstairs and he didn't go to sleep. So he's basically been up all night. He asked me if I would do the games first and then he would do the tidbits with me. And then he decided he didn't really want to do the tidbits. But we have lots of stuff to talk about because just because it's a holiday does not mean that there's not some good fantasy baseball news so thank you all to the chat room for joining me this morning on Father's Day. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And by the way, just to let you know, Lenny is okay. He just was up all night. He couldn't sleep past midnight. So he's been up and he's just didn't feel like doing all the work. It's a lot of work to get ready for these podcasts. And uh, so he's here. I hope you enjoy just chatting and interacting with Lenny in the chat room. He's perfectly fine. He just couldn't sleep all night. So you get stuck with me. All right. Hello, Daniel. Hello to SM King Turd, NFL Chief, Tommy Johnson, uh, Methical here. Nice to see you, Methical. And I'm sure some more of you will flow in. But if you're not here, we understand. You're spending time with your family. It's great. All right. The Cincinnati Reds now seven wins in a row. It's the longest winning streak in Major League Baseball. They're 36 and 35, and they're one half of a game out of first place. That could change everything today but we do love the Cincinnati Reds bringing up all their youngsters and I have to say we talked about some uh, call-ups to consider yesterday on Saturday baseball and one of them was Samad Taylor and uh, he should have been the top of the list really but we didn't really discuss Samad Taylor until I got into the game recaps but I happen to have this guy on my AL only league and I'm super excited because um He's already stolen 34 bases down in the minors. And I was just bringing him up because you see that Cincinnati started bringing up their young prospects. And it's just everybody loves prospects. There's nothing wrong with that. You just, you got to love the potential of these young kids. They're very exciting, especially for teams that aren't doing well. But Kansas City brought up Samad Taylor. And as bad as they've been, they actually won yesterday. Now, maybe that's just a coincidence. But it does seem that when you bring up these top prospects and they're exciting for the team, it motivates the team. And it kind of, and not to get off track here, but it reminds me of when the Texas Rangers. Now, they did win in the game yesterday, but they haven't done well at all the past couple weeks ever since they found out DeGrom wasn't coming back. And I've... You know, in my mind, it was like, well, they're doing great without DeGrom, so what's the big deal? But, you know, I had some very reasonable people telling me that it's just they're going to be done because they have nothing to look forward to with DeGrom coming back. And, you know, they, they're they just done, right? They might make the playoffs, but the team, you know, mentality and stuff, it, it really does matter. And I think that it's not just a coincidence that when you bring up these young players – that your team starts to do good. And when you know you have a pitcher like DeGrom coming back from injury, it helps the team do good. So anyway, let's get back to business. We do want to just give some credit to the Cincinnati Reds. 
Yuri Perez, the Marlins pitcher, they say he's definitely going to be staying in the rotation. I don't know who else. I don't know why that's even a question since Trevor Rogers is not coming back anytime soon now. I mean, he's back. He's back on his, uh, re, you know, he's back on his, uh, rehab, rehabilitation process, but he did have a setback just last week. And, uh, even with Yuri Perez and Trevor Rogers in the same lineup or the same rotation, it's that's what it is. It's gonna be a six man rotation because these guys can be put on innings limits. They have a lot of youngsters, but just to just to reinforce, Yuri Perez will remain in the Marlins rotation. His next star is against the Blue Jays. Let's talk about Corbin Carroll, this youngster, second in Major League Baseball and OPS, only behind Shohei Otani, which means that Corbin Car- Carroll has the highest OPS in the National League. Only one rookie has led his league in OPS since 1900. It was Fred Lynn in 1975 when he became the first player to win Rookie of the Year and MVP in the same season. So what are the chances that Corbin Carroll gets Rookie of the Year and MVP in the same season? Boston Paul, great to see you. Great to see DK Loosh. Thanks for joining us today. Tito Luna and Jeter Luna celebrating Father's Day together, I'm sure. Beautiful Father's Day. The Dodgers lost 15 to nothing yesterday. It was the Giants' second largest shutout win over the Dodgers in the history of the rivalry. The last time it happened, the Giants beat the Dodgers 16 to nothing in 1949. So that's crazy. And also, with all these runs yesterday, the the Giants, they scored a ton of runs, 15 runs. They did not get any hits. They didn't. No, that's wrong. They had 15 RBIs yesterday, and they did not get any RBIs from the middle of their lineup. Not th- third, fourth, fifth, or sixth in the lineup got any RBIs yesterday. That is an interesting tidbit, not very fantasy relevant, but let's talk about Bobby Miller. For You know, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tell you that he had a horrible outing. I'm not going to, I don't believe that though. The thing is, I watched this uh, outing by Bobby Miller and I do not believe that he was horrible. He was actually great and kept his... uh, he had a he had a no hit streak going of like twenty innings. He's brand new. He's a rookie. Yesterday he allowed seven runs on seven hits and walked three in five and two thirds. All of this damage happened in the sixth inning. At least most of it happened in the sixth inning. Um, he gave up two runs over twenty three innings across his first four starts. Yesterday his ERA went up to two point eight three. But honestly, they left this kid in too long. He, the first, the first one that got the hit, he he just kind of lost all of his mound presence. And I was watching Quick Pitch this morning, and they were mentioning that Bobby Miller has talked about his emotions on the mound and how if he doesn't get his emotions in check, that he could that could ruin his career. And you know what, mound presence is a huge part of pitching successfully. And he's very young, so we got to give him the credit where credit is due. But yesterday, when the stuff started going bad, he lost it. Now, they should have pulled him out before there was five runs scored on him in one inning. I think they might have waited a little too long. But regardless, I'm not going to sit here and, and say that Bobby Miller had a horrible outing yesterday, even though he did allow seven runs on seven hits and he walked three. It all happened at the end. He was very good up until the fifth inning. So his next outing, he's going to come back. He's hoping to bounce back. I think he will. He's a very likable little guy. I mean, he I won't call him a little guy, but he's a young guy. <laughs> I call him a, I'll call him a kid, okay? He's a youngster. He's going to have bumps in the road. But Bobby Miller still doing very good. Um Dodgers bullpen just basically shit the bed again, part of my French, okay, because they have been horrible since the middle of May. I was not going to say that the Dodgers bullpen was that bad because if you look at the ERA of these guys, it was still fine. However, the past three weeks, they have been absolutely horrible. They still 
they had to cover 11 innings in the past two games, and they definitely need some help in their bullpen. There's no doubt about it now. This is not subjective anymore. Uh, they they DFA'd Taylor Scott, a relief right-handed pitcher, and they promoted Brian Hudson from Oklahoma City. I'd like to get some info. I think King Turd, I know he lives in uh, Oklahoma, and I wonder if he goes to see this team. Um, he was 4-0 with a 217 ERA and 51 strikeouts and only 29 innings pitched. He will be an he will be making his MLDB debut as soon as the Dodgers get him in, which seems to be the sooner the better, right? Uh, the Dodgers Chris Taylor MRI showed a bone bruise in his right knee. He says he's very relieved. He thinks it's only going to be a few days. But what I read about his knee was that it's just uh, showing a lot of wear and tear, basically. Tanner Houck, you know, we talked about yesterday. He was hit in the face by uh, a comebacker. He went to the hospital. His face was bleeding, but he was able to walk off the field on his own. We have an update that he has... A facial fracture. He's at home, so he was released from the hospital. He's in good condition. Follow-up appointments next week will determine his next steps and a treatment plan. Otani, over his last 18 games for the Angels, 28... Listen to this guy, dude. 28 hits in 18 games. 28 hits, 18 extra base hits, 15 walks, 11 home runs, and 3 stolen bases. This is unbelievable. The only other player in MLB history, okay, to reach all of those numbers in an 18-game span was Lou Gehrig for the 1927 Yankees, okay? That's the only other hitter. And that's not even that's not even it, okay? We also have the pitching stuff. He leads the Angels. Let's talk, let's finish the hittings. He leads the Angels in batting average, home runs, RBIs on-base percentage, slugging percentage, OPS, triples, and stolen bases, my friends. Talk about a five-tool player. But we can actually say, Otani, is he a 10-tool player? Look at what he does leading the Angels in wins, ERA, innings pitched, strikeouts, strikeouts per nine, whip, batting average against, okay, and war, baseball reference war. All right, Otani is a 10-tool pitcher. I just made that up, by the way. What do you think? What do you think, chat room? Can we call him a 10-tool pitcher? Okay. Otani, the best player in the world. That's probably true. And as I mentioned yesterday, apparently there's a lot of Otanis coming up in Japan. Uh, These multifaceted players that can hit and pitch. It's not just a one. This is my... This might start being a trend out of these Japanese players. It seems that they have no problem raising these guys to hit and pitch. And it will be so exciting for baseball just all around to have more guys like this, right? I think it would. And we have to then change our fantasy leagues all to daily moves, which I don't know if a lot of people will be into that. But a lot of people don't have time to make daily moves, but my solution is simple. On Mondays, you just go through and set your lineup for the entire week, and that's good enough. Then you're good. It's a little extra work, but it's really nice for players like Otani if you have them, so you could put them in anywhere. All right. We also have a call-up of, well, I don't even know for sure if it was a call-up, but Zach Remillard for the White Sox, he... He was called up, or he he was actually put into the game when an injury happened. And we'll go over this whole thing. But he's the first player in American League history to come off the bench in his MLB debut and reach the base four or more times, okay? It happened last in 1940. So this guy did come off the bench, made his MLB debut, and got and reached base more than four times yesterday, Okay. We talk about the Cardinals a lot. I'm still not ready to give up on the Cardinals, but yesterday I had to admit that they had the worst uh, record in the National League starting yesterday. They managed to get out of that rut. They did win yesterday, but if you look at their totals between 2022 and 2023, it's really... 
it's pretty amazing the similarities. And after 70 games in the season, last year they only had 73 home runs. This year they have 94 home runs. So they're better this year in home runs. They're better this year in extra base hits. They have 214 compared to last year, 201. They're actually better in OPS, 742, compared to last year, 726. It's their pitching that is horrible for this team. And they had last year a 381 ERA at this time. And right now their ERA is 444. They have less errors than they did last year at this time. So it's not their defense. But their record last year after 70 games with worse stats, the only stat that's better this year, last year than this year is their ERA. They were 39 and 31 after 70 games and they were in first place in the NL Central. Right now, their record is 27 and 43 and they're in last place in the NL Central. It's crazy this, uh, what's going on. You got, you got the AL and the NL Central just crazy outcomes that over going on here with the the AL Central especially the teams some team under 500 is going to win that division possibly but that's baseball and that's what we love so I'm just keeping you all updated here now Blake Snell came in last night and he pit this was his second start in a row where he struck out 12 batters um He allowed two hits and three walks while striking out 12 over six shutout innings. Lenny wants to know if Otani is going to get dealt before August. I don't, I can't imagine. Unless the Angels just are horrible. I just can't. However, look, Otani is going to become a free agent next year. Right? He is not. He is going to get paid a pretty darn penny, five hundred million probably. The Angels. I don't even know for sure if they would want to keep him if they were about to win because they know they can. Why not? They. I'm pretty sure the Angels aren't going to sign him, but you never know. Whoever does sign this guy is going to have to come up with five hundred million dollars to pay him. We, you know, you can, uh, you can pretty much count out certain teams that just aren't going to do that. Like haven't had a $500 million payroll over the past five years combined, like such as Oakland and the Pirates and, you know, the stragglers, the ones that never pay out. You never know though. You just never know. So Yes, Blake Snell struck out 12 batters, two outings in a row, but it was his fifth straight start where he was very good. Over his last 30 innings, he's allowed two runs while posting a 45 to 13 strikeout to walk ratio. That's excellent for Blake Snell. And you know what? I love Machado. I can't wait to talk about the Padres. They're fun. When they win, they're great. When they lose, I still like them. All right, so Julio Urias, Dodgers starting pitcher, really hurting without this guy. He did throw a 40-pitch up-and-down bullpen session yesterday, so he's making his way back. But there is absolutely, for sure, he's going to have to start a rehab assignment, okay, after he does a sim game. So right now with his bullpen sessions, the next step is going to be a live sim game, and then he'll start the rehab assignment at in the minors, and then we'll see him back in the rotation, hopefully. Tristan McKenzie was pulled right before his start on Friday, and uh, he did go for an MRI. We told you that yesterday. Uh, The MRI shows that he's suffering from inflammation in his elbow. Now, Terry Francona came out and said that the elbow... He noted, and he specifically said in quotes, that this means that the UCL is involved... You never want to hear that come out of a manager's mouth, and you just don't know. So UCL issues are often the precursor to Tommy John. It may not come to that, but just be prepared for McKenzie to to just be prepared, okay? You know what I'm saying? You got it. Now, Matt Verling, Matt Veerling, he is a batting leadoff for the Detroit Tigers, and he has... Two consecutive three-hit games. 
His batting average is 268, and I would venture to guess that he is going to continue to see more opportunities at the top of the order if he continues to hit. I mean, that's basic math, right? He also has four stolen bases, but, and this is a huge red flag, people, do not expect, look, the guy loves to steal bases clearly. Let me tell you that he's been caught five times, and he's only been successful four times. So the chances of him continuing to get to steal bases is coming to an end if he can't be successful. Because when you get caught stealing, that's an out, okay? You only get three per inning. You get caught stealing, that's an out. That's why teams have been stealing bases less, because they know that these hitters nowadays have so much power. Why are you going to waste an out trying to steal a base? The bases are bigger now. I do think that has something to do with why there's more stolen bases. But regardless, when you go out there and you get caught five times and you're successful only four, it's just a matter of time before the Tigers say, whoa, buddy, the leash is coming in. So we'll see. I do like Veerling. He's going to get opportunities. He's absolutely going to hit at the top of the order. There are 20 closers this season with at least 10 saves. There are 130 pitchers with saves this year. Think of that. 130 pitchers got saved so far in 2023. Also, double that number to 218 who have had at least one save opportunity this year. Couple of hot closers right now. Alexis Diaz has four saves in the last week and Jordan Romano continues to be great with three saves over the last week. Cincinnati's outfield. Okay. Another youngster. Okay. Christian Encarnacion Strand. How exciting for me since I have him in my NL only keeper league. All right. Why hasn't Christian Encarnacion Strand been called up so far? He's got 17 home runs, a stolen base, 47 RBIs, and 46 runs scored on the season. He's batting 345 with a 413 on base percentage in 218 plate appearances at Triple A Louisville. Why is he not coming up? Here's why. They don't know where to put him, but... He is on the verge of making his debut, and I will say that he's actually playing corner outfield. They're giving him a try to play some other positions so that they can maybe make some room for him. How exciting is that? He does play first and third base. He's a corner infielder by trade, but they do have him working out in the outfield. If he can even do average with his glove, This kid is coming up, and that just adds how much more excitement to the Reds, who we've already named America's team this year because they're too exciting not to like, right? When we went to the Cincinnati game, Aroldis Chapman was uh, still the closer there, and every time he struck out a batter, they had fireworks. They did like three or four fireworks every time a Aroldis Chapman struck out a batter. It was a great time. Lots of great fans in Cincinnati. Great ballpark. Fun times around the ballpark. Anyway, let's start with the games. We're getting ready to do the games. SM King Turd says that he would take Blake Snell over Sandy Alcantara right now. And honestly, how could you not, right? Although I don't trust Snell at all, I will give him the credit that he's due since he's gone five great starts with a ton of strikeouts and very few walks. Okay, Snell, doing great right now. And you have to say, if you're not biased about the name recognition, you would have to take Snell over Alcantara right now, you know? Hello, King Hap. Very nice to see you. Say hello to Taco and all the ladies of the happy hour. All right, Chris from Cambridge, thanks for joining us today. Tommy Johnson, he says the Angels still have a chance. They're only four and a half games out of first place in the AL West. What do they do with Otani? Detroit beat, no, excuse me, backwards, the Tigers, (laughs) not, okay, why do I want to say the Tigers so bad? The Twins beat the Tigers two to nothing yesterday. The Twins have taken six straight season series from the Tigers. They're 65 and 40 against them since 2017. The Twins scored just one in a game 10 times and have been shut out five times over their first 70 games. So 
They basically aren't scoring a lot of runs. But they entered yesterday with a two-and-a-half game lead over Cleveland in the American League Central. They're, they improved to 13-10 and 10 under uh, against their own division. The Tigers are six games back. They're 29-40. and 40. The Twins opted for an all-reliever game yesterday so they could give their rotation a break. They have a stretch. They're currently in this stretch of 16 games without a day off. Jose De Leon started with two perfect innings. 18 of his 24 pitches were strikes. Brent Hedrick claimed his first Major League victory. He pitched two and a third. Johan Duran was the sixth pitcher and earned his ninth save in 10 attempts. And the Twins had only three hits thanks to Joey Wentz, who struck out a career-high nine strikeouts over six innings. It was his 13th start this season. Joey Wentz entered the game with 45 earned runs allowed and 56 innings this year. That wasn't good. His record is 1-7, and seven, but he did do well yesterday, six innings. He struck out five of the first seven batters that he faced. Matt Manning, Tigers pitcher, will make a third rehab start next week with Triple A Toledo. And Kenta Maeda for the Twins, he threw 81 pitches over four and a third in his latest rehab start for Triple A. Baldelli didn't rule out the possibility of running temporarily a six man rotation when Kenta Maeda comes back, and he is coming back soon. Tonight, the Tigers have not declared their starter, but whoever it is is going to face Louis Varland. The Cubbies, whoop de doo um, You know what? I like both of these teams. I love the Orioles and what they're doing. I love the Cubbies and what they're doing. I have to say, I, when I just look at the game, my instinct is to root for the Cubbies because they are right now on a great win streak. They have a season-high five straight win streak going on. They beat the Orioles yesterday, 3-2. to two. Justin Steele came back from injury. They activated him before the game. He threw five innings, two runs, five hits. He struck out four and walked one. Kyle Gibson, he still is, you know what? Kyle Gibson is an underrated, decent number three or four in your fantasy team. He struck out seven and walked two in six innings. Nico Horner had two hits and two RBIs. Nico Horner is batting 364 with seven RBI in his last eight games. And Adbert Alzale got his fourth save. Adley Rushman hit a two-run homer. That was his 10th of the season. And Austin Hayes had two of the team's seven hits. Yeah, the Astros and Rangers are arrow down. Shock the Mariners are so average. It's looking good for the Angels. It really could be. Tom Johnson wants to point out that the Pirates' downfall might be starting. I would say it probably is. It's great they beat up the Cards and the Reds. They haven't done so well against the Cubs and the Brewers so far. And he thinks that the Cubs and the Brewers, they just need to do better against the um yeah, the Pirates, they started out so surprisingly good. It's kind of hard to imagine that they could go anywhere but down from there. I don't know. But thanks for all the chatter in the chat room. It really is great to interact with all of you. James McCann is day-to-day. He twisted his ankle when he reached on an infield single in the second inning. He was replaced by a pinch hitter, so he did come out of the game. Keep an eye on James McCann. Also, Cedric Mullins is uh, working through a running progression. There's still no definitive timeline for his return. And the Cubbies put Patrick Wisdom on the 10-day injured list because he has a right wrist sprain. Now, one thing I want to point out is that David Ross claims that Wisdom has been dealing with this issue for about two weeks, but he aggravated it trying to make a diving catch. So Patrick Wisdom out. Tonight you get to see Dean Kramer against Jamison Tyon. And they both don't have good ERAs, but I have to mention that Dean Kramer actually has a better ERA and a winning record, okay? While Jamison Tyon has a 2-4 and record with the almost 7 ERA. That's just not a good season for Tyon. Hopefully he'll turn it around. This guy I know for a fact works very hard, so I can't imagine that he's just not trying to do everything he can to turn his season around. 
The Marlins beat the Nationals 5-2, to two, not surprising. Miami's won three straight. They're nine games over 500 for the first time since 2016. And Washington fell to 0-5 against the Marlins this season, and they've lost 10 of their last 12 overall. But Braxton Garrett... He pitched a couple of he pitched actually six good innings, one run, four hits, one walk, eight strikeouts, and I got to say Braxton Garrett over his past seven starts, he's 2 and 0 with a 2.13 ERA and 49 strikeouts in 32 innings, and Miami is 6 and 1 in game in all of the games that he starts. So, we got to give Braxton Garrett some credit here. Seriously, seven starts now ERA two thirteen, that's excellent. Not a lot of not a lot of attention being paid over there. Also, another rookie, Jake Urban, he allowed one run and four hits over five innings for the Nationals. He struck out four. He walked two. Joey Wendell had two hits. Luis Arias he went one for four with an intentional walk. His major league leading batting average sits at three eighty eight. Brian De La Cruz snapped an 0 for 21 skid with a two run single with the bases loaded in the ninth. And AJ Puck getting on with the saves this year. Ninth save, AJ Puck. Also, I have to mention Joey Manessis for Boston Paul. Every time I see his name in the recap, I always mention him for Boston Paul, even if he doesn't do jack nothing. He got an RBI single yesterday. All right. <laughs> Uh, are we going to see less running from Bellinger because of his injury? That's an interesting question. Well, actually, it was a statement posed in the chat room saying that he, uh, I'm afraid Bellinger injury is going to derail his running. I hope not. The Cubbies really need him. Seems like a very good firecracker for them to keep winning. The Marlins put Gene Segura on the 10-day injury list, retroactive to Thursday. They called up Jacob Amaya from AAA Jacksonville. I didn't have a chance to look up this kid, but he is called up. His last name is A-M-A-Y-A, Jacob Amaya. Check him out if you need to replace Gene Segura. Tonight you get to see Mal Pal's Jesus Lizardo against Patrick Corbin. The Rangers beat the Blue Jays 4-2, to two, so maybe it's not so bad for the Rangers. I guess they got to win one every now and then, right? Anyway, they still lead the American Le- American League West. They won for just the third time, though, in the last 10 games. Dane Dunning, he allowed four runs in the first inning. But after that, only two more. So is that a good start? I don't know. <laughs> you could say he only allowed two runs after he allowed four in the first inning. But Varsho hit his 12th home run off of Dunning. He did strike out three, and he walked one in six innings, so he pulled it together somewhat, okay, after the first inning when he allowed four runs. Um, Will Smith got his 12th save yesterday. Adelise Garcia leads MLB in assists, and I bring that up because his 10th one happened last night. He also had two singles. Another great youngster, rookie, Josh Jung. Okay, it was Josh Jung. And Jonah Heim, back-to-back, hitting homers in the second inning. Jung is actually the American League rookie leader in RBIs with 42 on the season. That's amazing. Corey Seager hit his 10th homer. Okay. Tonight you get to see John Gray. He's returning in the series finale after he skipped his last start due to a blister. He's 5-1 and one with a .84 ERA in his past six starts. He's third in the American League in ERA, and he goes up against Toronto's Chris Bassett, who had a horrible outing last time. He allowed eight runs on 11 hits in only three innings, okay, to Baltimore. So Chris Bassett coming off a horrible start against a really good, a guy who's having a great season finally since he got out of Colorado, right? Kyle Schwarber again, if you could believe it, a go-ahead single in the 12th. And the Phillies beat the Athletics 3-2 to two for their fifth straight win. The Phillies won their sixth in seven. Okay, they won their sixth game in the last seven and 12th of their last 14. The game lasted three hours and 27 minutes. 
Christopher Sanchez had everything going right in his return to the majors, okay? He had a comebacker glance off his pitching hand, and he had to exit. So the x-rays on his hand were negative, and Rob Thompson expects him to make his next start. He struck out five over four scoreless innings. That was only his second outing and first since April 22nd. Also his first career road star and first against an AL West opponent. The A's lost their fourth in a row after a season-best seven-game winning streak. James Caprillian struck out six and didn't walk a batter, pitching into the sixth inning. One run, five hits allowed. Hello, guest Bobo. Nice to see you, my friend. Post-1958, great to see you, too. Yeah, post-1958 brings up Braxton Garrett and his bad start against Atlanta where he gave up 11 earned runs in four and a third innings. And he says if you throw that start out, he would be a top 10 pitcher right now. Excellent. And he was good last year too, he says. So great stuff. Jeff Hoffman earned his second career save and first since 2020, all right, with Colorado. And... uh Ruiz and Blade, they pulled off a double steal. Ramon Laureano was ejected by third base umpire because he was ex- upset about a strike and a ball call. Blade replaced him in right field. Sir Anthony Dominguez was placed on the injured list. Retroactive to Friday, he's got a left oblique strain. We know all about those. They could take a week. They could take a year. Tonight you get to see Zach Wheeler. This guy is working for some... Uh, milestones here he's going to make his 15th start uh, he's he's six strikeouts away from 100 strikeouts on the season so we're hoping to see Zach Wheeler break the 100 mark he didn't start the season off good at all but he's had some great outings lately Hogan Harris is making his sixth career appearance against Zach Wheeler today Samad Taylor do, 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 la, 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 Samad Taylor hit a walk-off single in his MLB debut and the Kansas City Royals beat the Angels 10-9 to to snap a 10-game losing streak, okay? Maybe they are some brightness in Kansas City future, just for a little while at least. Come on. The Royals went 6-10 for 10 with runners in scoring position, all from the 7th inning on. They went 10-69 for 69 with runners in scoring position during their 10-game losing streak. So you got to score them. When they're on the bases, you got to get them in. Uh, Los Angeles did have a good start by Griffin Canning. He allowed two runs on three hits in six innings. And Mike Mayers gave up six runs on seven hits in five-plus innings for Kansas City. Kansas City just not great with their pitching, right? Aroldis Chapman got the win. Uh, Brandon Drury hit two home runs. He drove in three. And Otani hit his major league baseball leading 23rd home run. Taylor Ward homered. MJ Melendez, 420-foot home run. That's great to see him hitting. Anthony Rendon remained out of the lineup. He's got soreness in his left wrist. Manager Phil said the plan is to get him ready to start on Tuesday. Back in the lineup Tuesday for Rendon. That's the hope. All right, this is not etched in the kitchen table. Tonight you get to see Tyler Anderson against Zach Granke. Zach Remillard. It took Zach Remillard seven seasons in the minors before he finally got the call. He was headed to the majors. That's exciting. It took one game off the bench, no less, for Remillard to join some rare company, both in White Sox and big league history. He entered as a mid-game substitute due to injury. He rallied the White Sox to a 4-3 win over the Mariners. His base hit in the ninth inning scored the tying run, and his RBI single with two outs in the 11th gave Chicago the lead. Tim Anderson is the reason he got to come in the game. He left with a sore shoulder. Uh, Remillard got on base four times. He walked, he bunted, and it was the two biggest hits of the game that he got. So... He became the seventh player in White Sox history and first since 1998 to have three hits in his debut. And luckily for him, his family was able to be at the game. 
They weren't even sure he was going to get in the game, but they were excited that their kid got called up after all these years. How could you not be? So they made it to the game, and look what he did. How exciting for him. He's the 10th player in Major League history to have three hits off the bench in his debut and one of two since 1976. Now that's going back a ways, I can attest. Logan Gilbert threw five and a third innings, two runs, six hits. Giolito had allowed only one earned run over 13 innings in his previous two starts, but he gave up eight hits, walked three, and struck out five. Seawald, second blown save, but Eloy homered. Eloy homered for the second time in three games. It was his eighth homer of the season. Luis Robert Jr. had a two-out RBI single. J.P. Crawford homered on Giolito's first pitch, and Teoscar Hernandez extended his June tear with an RBI single. Teoscar Hernandez hitting very well in June. Jesse Schultons pitched the 11th for his first save. Tim Anderson was moved out of Chicago's leadoff spot for the first time since the end of 2019. It was 299 consecutive starts at the top of the lineup. They moved him not down far to the number two spot, but he got hurt. He left in the fourth inning shoulder soreness, but the team says he's day-to-day, which is a fantasy manager's worst nightmare. Day-to-day sucks. You're either injured or you're playing, okay? That's it. Tonight, you get to see Lance Lynn against Bryce Miller. Now, Lynn is actually 4-1 and one with a one nine three ERA and seven starts against uh, Seattle in his career. Bryce Miller for the Mariners, he's very good. He allowed one hit and struck out six over six innings in his last start against Miami. And he has four starts this season of at least six innings and two or fewer hits allowed. Not runs, hits. All right, have a great day, Tommy Johnson. Wonderful to see you. Keep on chatting, you guys, because it keeps me company. And uh, Leonard, keep on doing it. Surging Reds beat the Astros 10-3. It extends Cincinnati's winning streak to seven games. It's the first time the wet, the Reds have won seven in a row since 2018, and it's the longest active winning streak in the majors. The Astros, on the other hand, lost their third straight. Hunter Green allowed five hits, two runs, six innings, second win of the season. Belak, you, Belak. I forgot his first name, or Bilat. I can't say his name. You know what I'm talking about. Five hits, five runs, four earned, four and two-thirds. Jonathan India, two-run homer. Will Benson, who I picked up last week, he's been okay. He had three hits and two RBIs. And Ellie De La Cruz, doubled with two hits and a stolen base. I wonder if he's stealing more bases than Trey Turner. That very well could be. But he did enter the game in an 0 for 13 skid. So Ellie De La Cruz still doing it. Got a stolen base. Now this bet I made with King Turd was started on June 15th. And we bet that He said Ellie will get more stolen bases than Trey Turner for the rest of the season. I think it's a great bet. Keeps it fun. We're going to have to have a talk about what kind of beer we're sending, though. Jose Altuve tied a career best with four hits, three for extra bases, and a solo homer. It was his 35th career four-hit game. He passed Craig Biggio for the most in franchise history. All right, Stuart Fairchild was out of the uh, lineup for the second straight game for the Reds. He's got neck neck stiffness. Astros' Michael Brantley took batting practice on the field for the first time since early May, but there's still no timetable for Michael Brantley's return. Tonight you get to see Luke Weaver against Ronel Blanco. Atlanta, 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 the homer happy Atlanta Braves. Matt Olson hit a first inning grand slam. And the Atlanta Braves won their fifth straight game, 10-2, to over the Rockies. The Braves moved a season-high 19 games over 500. they They've combined for 42 runs and 52 hits during this winning streak. They lead the majors with 122 home runs. All right. Thanks, Leonard Donaldson. Have a great day. Their 66 runs topped the majors, and they also ranked first with 31 games of at least one run in the first inning. So they waste no time, these Braves. What an exciting team they are. 
The Rockies, they're last in the NL West. They've lost 14 of their last 19 games, including the last four straight. Their starting pitchers have posted a 7.73 ERA over that span. Bryce Elder retired the first 11 batters he faced. Excellent. He gave up Mike Mustaka's homer in the fifth and finished with four hits and one run allowed with no walks, four strikeouts, six innings. This guy is 5-1 and one now. He began the game ranked second in the National League with a 2.69 ERA. 19th consecutive outing of at least five innings pitched. His last start was a bad outing, okay? But that's we can just forget about it. Atlanta is 10-4 and four in his starts this season. Connor Siebold, nine runs, nine hits allowed in three innings, gave up four home runs, and his ERA rose 118 points to 588. Ozzy Albies, Eddie Rosario, and Orlando Arcia all hit home runs. It was Olsen's 20th home run, 424 feet. And Arcia, he went three for four. He's hitting 339. Under the radar, Orlando Arcia, we did read yesterday that he was getting the most votes right now for the National League All Star voting. And, the, and he's got the most votes, but he's having a great season. Defensively, I think he's better than, you know, offensively, but still, all around doing very good at the plate. Sean Murphy left the game in the third. He's got right hamstring tightness. He hit a hard single to the wall in left center. But Brian Snicker, after Snicker, he said that the team is waiting on results for an MRI. So keep an eye for Sean Murphy. Now, uh, we talked about Denelson Lamette yesterday, and really, is he worth talking about more? But we probably won't have to do it much in the future because they designated him for assignment. Although the manager, Bud Black, does hope that Lamette will clear waivers and get assigned to AAA Albuquerque. They just couldn't send him down anymore. So, you know what I mean? Denelson Lamette, what's he ever going to do? He was such a great hopeful at some point. He actually helped me win, come real close to winning Chow Wars when he, uh, when I got him for $10 one year and he actually, like, just totally destroyed everybody okay now Gavin Hollowell was recalled from Albuquerque all right and Charlie Morton faces Chase Anderson tonight Leonard how's it going great how's everybody in the chat room good because all right let me just refresh it so I can make sure I see everybody there you go all right Milwaukee Brewers, 5-0. They beat the Pirates, 5-0. The victory pushed the Brewers one and a half game ahead of Pittsburgh atop the National League Central standings. Wade Miley pitched five scoreless innings. He actually was activated before the game. He missed over a month, but he was one of the most reliable starting pitchers before he got hurt. He had a a 3.67 ERA in eight starts before he went on the injured list on May 16th. Yesterday, two hits allowed and two walks. He struck out four. Mitch Keller struck out seven. Joey Weimer homered for the second straight game. You know, that was Weimer's 10th home run, not even halfway through his rookie season. He really is a fan favorite in Pittsburgh. I want to talk to the Pittsburgh Pirates fans. Great to see you, Mitchell. Um... Let's tell you Joey Weimer. He's a total fan favorite at PNC Park, all right? He has this blonde mullet, all right? He walks around and everybody loves it. Saturday, the team actually offered free mullet cuts to fans in the stand during the game, okay? How fun is that? I know they have this great mullet contest every year for these and these kids. They all get, you know, they all have their mullets and it's like, who has the best mullet? A mullet is just such a fun thing, and especially for dudes. I mean, you could grow your hair out so quickly. Get into mullet, you know, if it's horrible, which it is. It's only going to destroy your hair for a couple months, really. Anyway, the Pirates were giving out free mullet cuts yesterday in the stands during the game, and it's all based off Joey Weimer and his mullet that he sports around, and the fans just love him, okay? So... His home run yesterday made him one of only 11 players this season with at least 10 home runs and 10 stolen bases. He's the first... Wait, I'm telling you that it's happening at PNC. He's actually a a brewer, so I apologize for that. I'm just reading my notes. 
Joey Weimer is a brewer. So it was happening at Brewers Park. They're, wait a minute. Let's see what's going on. It just says that he's been sporting a blonde mullet all season. And yesterday the team offered free mullet cuts to fans in the stands. So this was a game at... Obviously, they're not doing that against at Pittsburgh Ballpark. Milwaukee. But it was at Milwaukee. I'll tell you this. I don't even know what team he's on. <laughs> I know. All right. Still, he's the first Brewers rookie to hit 10 home runs since Tyler Taylor did it in 2021, and he only hit 12. So here's the thing. Weimer is one of only 11 players in all of Major League Baseball that has at least 10 home runs and 10 stolen bases. We're always, in fantasy, we're always looking for those players that have stolen bases and home runs, but that's exciting. He still rolls around with a bullet, and I love it. All right, but here's another update for some injury stuff with the Brewers. Jesse Winker activated from the injured list before yesterday's game, and they optioned Tyson Miller down to AAA, and they designated for assignment John Singleton. So Luis Ortiz against Freddie Peralta tonight. Paul Goldschmidt hit a two-run home run. The Cardinals snapped a six-game losing streak by beating the Mets. Five to three. Of course, it had to be the Mets, right? The Cardinals began the day with the worst record in the National League, and they won for the fourth time in the last 17 games. The Mets have dropped 10 of their last 13 games. Adam Wainwright. Yay, Wainwright. He's in his 40s, still doing good. Pitched into the seventh inning for his 198th win. He only needs two more wins to become the fifth active pitcher with 200 wins. He tossed a season-high six in the third innings, gave up three runs, struck out three. It was his longest outing since last August. He's 5-2 and two with a 3-5-3 ERA in nine regular season games at City Field and Shea Stadium. Kodai Senga, he took the loss, four runs, struck out eight, six and two-thirds. The Mets fell to 19-2 and two when their starting pitcher goes at least six innings. All right. Jordan Walker, he got a home run. Brandon Donovan and Dylan Carlson each had RBI singles. Brandon Nimmo tried to crush Wainwright's parade. He launched a first off of his first pitch. He hit a homer. That was the second homer for Brandon Nimmo in five days. Luis Guillerme hit a two-run homer. Jordan Hicks got his first save since 2019. He entered the game with a 4.79 ERA in 72 games, including eight starts since he returned in 2021. Now, Tyler O'Neill, what a disappointment. You basically set him on your injured list, and he's been sucking up a spot all season long. They say he could begin swinging a bat tomorrow. That's great. Lindor, uh... He started the, you know, Lindor hasn't missed a game in 178 games. He did not miss a game yesterday. He pinch hit in the ninth inning and he was hit by a 102 mile an hour fastball from Hicks. Okay. Anyway, Carlos Carrasco goes up against Matthew Libertor tonight. St. Louis is one of the four teams that Carrasco has never beaten in his 14 year career. Last night, the Yankees in Boston was postponed, but the Padres. Did you lose sound? Is the sound good? The sound is good. Sound is good. The, just refresh if the sound s- stops. It's probably best if you lost sound anyway, since I don't know what team Joey Weimer is on. But whatever. You can't can't remember everything. Tampa Bay struck out 17 times yesterday against the Padres. They lost 2 to nothing. Tampa Bay dropped to 15-8 and eight in interleague play. It was the fourth time this year that the Rays were shut out. The crowd at Petco Park was 43,180. It was a record for the Padres. It was their 27th sellout this season, breaking their previous mark of 26 sellouts last season. Here's the thing. The season isn't even half over yet. So... I don't understand how they could say that they broke a park record if it was their 27th sellout of the season. So how many, the the seats don't fluctuate, the number of seats don't fluctuate in the ballpark every, every game. They say it was their 27th sellout of the season, but they broke 
the ballpark record, they had 43,180. So they averaged 40,467 fans per home game. That's second in the majors behind the Los Angeles Dodgers, who averaged 47,800 every game. We talked about Blake Snell. Let's go ahead and just do a quickie here. He... This guy, what I want to point out with this game recap is the fact we already said he fanned 12. He fanned, he struck out 12 in two straight starts yesterday, made it six innings, but he mixed up his pitches very successfully against the Rays yesterday. He got four strikeouts on fastballs, four on sliders, three on curveballs, and one on a changeup. So he was just throwing his whole arsenal out there yesterday and getting batters to strike out like crazy. Two hits, he still walked three, but he worked out of jams with multiple runners on base in the fourth and the fifth inning. He struck out six of his first eight batters, and he was going up against Eflin, who lost his second consecutive, but he gave up three hits and struck out five in six innings. He's still 8-3 and three on the season. You know I'm a big fan of Eflin, so it probably sounds biased when I try to tell you how he lost. <laughs> Juan Soto hit a sacrifice fly in the fifth. Machado drove in a run with an infield single after the Padres opened the inning with three bunts. Josh Hader got a 17th save. Tonight you get to see Joe Musgrove go up against Gianni Chirinos. Lamont Wade Jr. hit a three-run homer. J.D. Davis added a pinch hit, grand slam, and the Giants beat the Dodgers 15 to nothing yesterday for their season-high sixth straight victory. It was the Giants' largest margin of victory over their NL West rival since 2013. It also matches the worst home shutout loss in Dodgers history, which came in 1898 against Pittsburgh when the team was still in Brooklyn. The Dodgers dropped a home series to the Giants for the first time since losing three of four in 2021. Alex Wood allowed three hits, five innings, struck out four, didn't walk anybody, just came off the injured list right before the game yesterday. You know, he was dealing with a back strain. Did a good job. Tristan Beck earned a four inning save and Miller, we told you about him too. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk a lot. His streak of, uh, 20 and a third scoreless innings was snapped yesterday. But I'm telling you, he did very good up until the end when he just fell apart. And that happens. Um, Lamont Wade and Davis, J.D. Davis, they each drove in five runs. Brandon Crawford had four of the Giants' 17 hits. Wilmer Flores went to the I.L. with left foot contusion. And John Brebbia also went to the I.L. with the right lat strain. So I told you an update with Julio Urias' hamstring issue. Through 40 pitches, he'll next face hitters and then go to a rehab assignment. Chris Taylor received a cortisone shot in his right knee, which shows sign of cartilage wear and tear. He likely won't be available today, but won't go on the injured list for now. I told you earlier he was pretty happy about the results of the test. Tonight you get to see Logan Webb, who is on many of my teams and started out the season pretty crappy, but he's been one of the National League's best pitchers since April 22nd. He's got a 2.53 ERA over that stretch, and he's second best in the league behind, wait for it, Michael Waka during that time. Tony Gonsolin goes for the Dodgers tonight. He's pretty good. He's got a 3-3-8 ERA with 14 strikeouts in four career games against the Giants. Jake McCarthy led off the eighth with a go-ahead homer. Rookie Corbin Carroll added a two-run shot three batters later, and the Diamondbacks launched three home runs in the inning to beat Cleveland 6-3. It was McCarthy's second homer of the season. It gave Arizona a 3-2 lead and sprinted around the bases, looking like he was trying to beat out an inside-the-park home run instead of an actual home run. I mean, he was just speeding around the bases. He, you know, going into this season, McCarthy was considered one of the youngsters, one of their uh, great, great new youngsters coming up. 
He got sent to AAA because he didn't play very well in April. But when he returned in late May, he's been great. He's batting 318 with three doubles, two triples, a home run, and 12 stolen bases since May 26th. This guy is on fire since he got promoted again. Arizona is surprisingly atop the National League West standings, and they've taken the first two games of the series. They're going for a sweep today. Shane Bieber was very good until his final few batters. He gave up two homers. He allowed five runs on seven hits, seven in the third innings, though. He only walked two and struck out five. Tommy Henry, which is the Diamondbacks lefty, gave up two runs and seven hits, six innings, bounced back after two rocky starts. He walked two and struck out three. My boy Lourdes Gurriel, yay, had a solo home run, and Arizona scored all of their runs with home runs. Andres Jimenez hit a homer, Christian Walker, two-run homer, 14th of the season. Scott McGough got his third save, Stephen Kwan and Ahmad Rosario, the top two batters in Cleveland's lineup. They both had four hits apiece. Tristan McKenzie placed on the injured list. We don't really know for sure, but they're calling it right now a right elbow sprain. And I told you that they were going to call up uh, the catching prospect, Bo Naylor, uh, Terry Francona said that he's going to start today. And they also promoted from AAA Daniel Norris and Tim Heron, two left-handed pitchers. And they designated for assignment Tuki Toussaint. Zach Davies goes up against Tanner Bybee today. And that is your full Sunday baseball uh, I hope every one of you have a great Father's Day. We will definitely have a great Father's Day, too. Lenny's doing just fine. He just didn't get much sleep last night because he woke up at midnight. So didn't go back to sleep anymore. He needs a nap today. We'll get him one. He'll be back in action tomorrow. Join us tomorrow, 9 o'clock Monday, Lenny's Daily Podcast. And just please have a great Father's Day. We love you.